For those of you who don't know, I was actually an archaeology student, so welcome to an expert's opinion on excavation of something that nobody would ever excavate. <laughs> welcome to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith, and today we're excavating my Kindle. This is going to be incredibly scientific and you're even going to get to explore some archaeological principles as we go. I even owned a trowel, it was real, here is me doing archaeology. Who says a humanities degree is not applicable after you leave university? This is my Kindle. This is a Kindle paperweight I bought three years ago. It currently has a bat sticker on the back, which you can buy if you like. It's in my red bubble, which is always linked below. Shameless self promo over. If you're thinking about buying a Kindle, I really like Kindle paperweight. This isn't sponsored or anything. I just like this. I use it a lot. It's got a backlight. I think my first Kindle I probably got when I was a teenager and it was a hand-me-down. I think I inherited it from my mother. I've had another one that was another hand me down that I inherited from my grandma. Uh, this is the first one I've owned on my own. I've also had the Kindle app on my phone for a very long time. So essentially ebooks have travelled with me a long time and I was looking at the Kindle app the other day and I was like gosh there's quite a lot of books on here. I realised it's actually a bit of a time capsule so I thought uh, for a fun video idea we'd take a quick whiz through my Kindle and I could talk to you about what I read and why I read it at that time and have a little look at like what I was reading in my teens and in my early 20s and all of that jazz. So onto some archaeological principles because we want this to be an educational video. I'm going to talk to you about the concept of stratigraphy, which is the idea that the things that are oldest are at the bottom and the things that are newest are at the top. And that's kind of how it works on my Kindle. It is a pretty good look at what I've been doing for the last what, uh, 10 years probably. So I'm going to open the Kindle app on my phone. So this is my Kindle um, on my app. As you can see, uh, it does a lot of stuff, but what I want is the library. So here we are, right when I first got a Kindle, and as you may be able to tell, the first thing I did, because I'm cheap, is go, what can I read for free? And just downloaded a whole bunch of free stuff. So we have a bit of Charles Dickens, Heidi, Heidi's a lovely book. If you read Heidi, oh, so lovely. Uh, some Shakespeare, Treasure Island, I've still never read. I keep meaning to read that. Arabian Nights, some sonnets, more Shakespeare, more Shakespeare and Sherlock Holmes. I was super into Sherlock Holmes for a bit. I used to listen to like an old-timey radio version of Sherlock Holmes every night when I went to sleep. So I know quite a lot of really obscure Sherlock Holmes short stories now. There you go. We also have The Princess Diaries Mia Goes Forth. It's my favourite one of all of them because it's kind of the end of the first arc. So that would probably have been kind of my late teens and then I fell out of reading for quite a while. This is probably me just before my Oxford interview. So we start to hit Judith realises she probably ought to read some things about the subject she's going to study, uh, which was archaeology and ancient history, in case you didn't know. So we've got The History of Herodotus, volumes one and two, which is an incredibly boring book that has like one interesting chapter where there are ants the size of foxes that mine gold. Little Women. I don't think I've ever actually sat down and read Little Women thinking about it now. This was one of the people who interviewed me for Oxford and I got his book so that I could say I'd read his book which is the cheesiest thing I have ever done. But there we go. I also managed to not laugh at his name during our interview so that was positive. My Oxford interview is a whole experience. One day maybe I'll talk about that. We got the Greeks and the Irrational, the Roman Revolution. Roman Revolution was really boring. I have a feeling that was pre-reading for Oxford but maybe I'm wrong. Then we get into kind of like the start of what YA Judith was reading at this time that she did not get in the school library. So we have Insurgent by Veronica Roth, which is the second book in the Divergent series. Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. I think all these books are on here. I do actually own them physically now. There it is. Dee -dee -dee. I read them on Kindle first. Game of Thrones. Apparently I thought that would be a good idea. I did read that and quite enjoyed it. Game of Thrones as a whole series wasn't for me. It was just too many things to keep track of. Then we move into <laughs> The Shadowhunters Time. Um, I read all three of these and I really enjoyed them. This is the thing, when you read these stuff and you don't read a lot of other things and you don't think particularly critically about stuff, it's all good. Free For A Divergent Story, which is a short story about Divergent. I was very into Divergent as well. Uh, this is peak Judith Reads YA time. Uh, and then we get into the Percy Jackson. So I've read all of the original Percy Jackson series. Really, really loved them. I mean, I was an ancient history nerd, so loved them, loved them, loved them. I've not read any of the ones past, is it the Last Olympian? Yes. I've not read any past that, and at one day I will. YA, because I was reading short things to distract me from how difficult my degree was, along with books that were available on Kindle for my degree for not too much because sometimes I didn't want to go to the library. So we have like Greek sanctuaries and Athenian politics circa 800 to 500 BC, and also 
diversion and allegiance. <laughs> I, d I don't remember anything about reading Athenian politics 800 to 500 BC a source book but Divergent and Allegiant, interesting books. I think Allegiant I remember reading when I was at university, the rest of them I don't really know when I first got them but Allegiant definitely was a university read and I think I think there was somebody else who was into the books as well who lived in my staircase and I got the third one and read it and then they hadn't read it yet and I was like I can't talk to you about this because there's too many things going on ah these I did own before I've definitely reread these these are the Hunger Games I don't think we need to go into the Hunger Games but they are all on here again I used to buy stuff on Kindle much more than I do now the Lives of the Twelve Caesars by Tranquilus you know that book that's very similar to the Hunger Games <laughs> Night of Cake and Puppets by Lenny Taylor that's one thing that I really do need to put on my wish list of something to buy is the actual edition of that with the illustrations because it's one of my favorite things the Dance is New, that's a poetry book that my friend's poem was published in because I'm a supportive friend. More ancient history. Mary Beard's Pompeii, which I don't think I've actually read. Ooh. We have some more YA. We have Daughter of Smoke and Bone and Dreams of God and Monsters. So again, I was super into this series. I didn't buy Daughter of Smoke and Bone for quite a while because I'd had it from the library and I used to not buy things if I'd already read them. But then apparently I broke. And we also have Moi Moi by Chloe Rayban. Uh, which was a book I remembered reading from the school library and I wanted to read it again and it is really really silly contemporary YA from I don't even know what year it was originally written in but who oh boy is it entertaining. <laughs> Orange is the New Black, the original book, that's very good. This is stuff that I must have read my first year, speaking of archaeology, my first year out in Italy digging the Sangro Valley project. I remember a girl at the dig saying you have to read World War Z, it's so well written, it's really clever take on a zombie novel uh, and I downloaded it and I read it and it, she's right, it's so good. If you've not read World War Z and you've been put off because you think I don't want to read a zombie novel, the film is weird, read it, it's so so interesting. Uh, and then we have Lauren Oliver's Pandemonium and then Requiem which are interesting again they're from that time in YA where we were getting kind of like uglies and um, uglies pretty specials uh, and they're very similar to that and it's kind of again this this is just a time capsule of popular YA from about 10 years ago <laughs> then we've got Michael Grant's Gone which apparently I fancied reading I'm not a huge fan of Michael Grant anymore I don't think I was at the time I think I just thought it was interesting but uh Michael Grant's latest books I found to be too much for me. Adorkable by Sarah Manning is, uh, again, it's like silly teen contemporary romance. All the contemporary stuff I've ever loved has been really, really silly. <laughs> the Vampire Academy books I completely binge read when I was on a lot of painkillers because I had secondary burns on my legs in my second year. And if you want something to read when you have secondary burns and you're on a lot of pain medication, I really recommend Vampire Academy. They're very bingeable. <laughs> and then obviously we have the revised Latin primer. So that's fun. And then, quite telling, I think, the next time I was able to sit down and read anything, and bear in mind I read most stuff on my Kindle at that point, was not till the next summer, where I was again at the Sangre Valley Project and I read Tolstoy's Anna Karenina. The book is good if you like Tolstoy, if you, like me, find all the characters to be annoying and pointless, and you just want it to get to the end because you know how it ends, no spoilers. And then I read um, the Girl in the Box series books one to three which were free, I think at the time, uh, and I was a student so I didn't have any money, and um, they are not, I don't think they're very good. Anyway, there was a reason they were free. I put out a call on Facebook while I was away on this project and I said, has anyone got any book recommendations? And someone said, what about Elizabeth is Missing? That sounds like fun. And I cried and cried and cried and cried and cried because it's very close to my heart. So unless you want to weep a lot, Elizabeth is Missing would maybe not be one to try when you're in a fragile emotional state. We also have Serafina and Shadow Scale, which I've talked about on my blog a huge amount, but they're some of my favourite dragon books. We have all of the Paper Magician trilogy. These are really lovely romance books with really light magic. They're good fun. They're on Kindle Unlimited. You can get them well worth reading, wholesome and fun. The whole of the Maze Runner series, because again, I was like, I've missed so much YA. Let's get back to that. Uh, Maze Runner series, what are my thoughts on the Maze Runner series? It's perfectly fine. I'd like more women in it. I understand why there aren't more women in it, but also, you know, and then followed by The City of God by St. Augustine. This is when I was doing the St. Augustine paper. Wouldn't recommend as much as I would recommend Howl's Moving Castle, which is a very lovely book. A quick battery change and we're back. Where were we up to? Heist by EMG Taylor. I've never read and I bought because the predecessor in my job, which was my first job out of uni, is EMG Taylor and I thought I should support buying her book, which was self-published. I've not read it. 
I don't think it's really probably going to be read, but just an interesting tidbit. And then we get into Judith has insomnia and has also started blogging time. So I read Frostlight Night by Sarah Rash, which I read all three of them. Some of them were from the library ebook. A lot of stuff I was reading from the library at this point. These were again quite light YA. You know, she has frost powers. It makes sense. You get it. Um, and I read the first two from the library. They didn't have the third one, so I bought the third one. There you go. Natural History of Dragons. I could wax lyrical about this series forever. They're on my list of like, when I win the lottery, I will buy all of them so I own all of them. Uh, as it is, I just own this one and Turning Darkness into Light, which is in the new series. I'm definitely blogging at this point because I have this golden trilogy, which I don't remember reading, but I think it was one of the, there are about two of these. It was one of those books where I requested it on NetGalley, didn't download it in time, but was too stubborn about my percentage to not. If Winter Song by S.J. Jones, which honestly, until this moment, I'd forgotten that I owned and now want to reread, so that's fun. The Winter's Tale by William Shakespeare. I was in a production of The Winter's Tale, so that's very lovely. And clearly thought it would be good to have the script on Kindle or forgot to bring my script to rehearsal one day, which is more likely. Across the Darkling Sea is the other example of Judith forgot to download a book in time and now it's expired and she needs to review it because otherwise her net galley percentage will go down. Spell Slinger uh, I bought because I got the second one on net galley and I needed to read the first one great series if you've not read that. Cress and Winter, Scarlet's up at the top somewhere because I've read that recently. The Lunar Chronicles, excellent reads if you want them. Heartland by Lucy Hansom is another. I bought the first book because the second book was on NetGalley. <laughs> Same with Contagion by Terry Terry. Both very interesting, again, very basic YA series, but there you go. Reign of the Fallen was one of the few full price Kindle books I've ever bought. I'm not sure why I pre-ordered Reign of the Fallen as a Kindle book, but I did and I really enjoyed it and now I want to buy the physical copy of it. Then we're into Kindle sale stuff. So we have Cuckoo Song by Frances Harding, which is a great book, kind of fae-y, um, but I'll read anything that Frances Harding's produced. Spare and Found Parts by Sarah Maria Griffin, which I didn't enjoy very much. I thought it was fine. It was a bit lit fic for me. Um, but her other book, Other Words for Smoke, oh, I'll show you back. But her other book, Other Words for Smoke, is really good. Gospel of Loki by Joanne Harris. I had The Testament of Loki on NetGalley. Liza Lockmore I bought in a sale. That's recommended to me by Asha. Uh, absolutely loved it. Have the audiobook for all of them now. Would recommend the audiobooks. I think I read Liza Lockmore in one of my Book A Day in June's, possibly the first one. Gilded King by Josie Jeffrey. She quite frequently discounts these and I bought it in a sale. I now own it physically. Somewhere behind me. There they are. Dink. But yes, would recommend uh, and her stuff is good. More Kindle sale stuff. I bought and Clariel by Garth Nix. Sequels to Sabriel. I did the audiobook of Sabriel. I can't remember if I did the other ones, but the audiobooks are read by Tim Curry, so what more do you need me to persuade you? The Full His Dark Materials. I read these for the first time last year uh, as an adult. I never read them as a teenager. I quite enjoyed them. I wasn't as diehard a fan as some people were, and I think it's that nostalgia, which I have for a lot of the trash way on this list, so there you go. The short story that goes with this Mortal Coil series, which I still think I'm gonna do a series review on at some point. I'm just trying to work out the right timing to do. Then we get into the Tamora Pierce phase. So I have the whole of the Alana Quartet on Kindle. They're very, very good. And I have just one of the Dane series because I had the other three on NetGalley. It's a trend. Would highly recommend these books. I think they're just fabulous. Nothing but Sky by Amy Trueblood. I think this was another, like, grab it for cheap in a Kindle sale, um, but it's about an aviatrix and that's all I can remember, but it's quite good. My Lady's Choosing is a Choose Your Own Adventure romance novel. It's very, very silly. Um, I can't cope with Choose Your Own Adventure books because I am too much of a completionist. So I did kind of a few pathways and I was like, I don't know if I'm missing stuff. What if I just read it cover to cover? And I started doing that and because that's not the way you're meant to do it, got very bored very quickly. But there is some interesting pathways in that based on that. Dragon of Ash and Stars, the autobiography of a young dragon, it's something like that, but it was all right. I don't think I'd recommend it wholeheartedly. The toyin is because uh, <laughs> I met a person for the first time at a friend's birthday party and they were just one of those people who were just one of the most interesting people I ever met and they were learning old Irish just as part of their degree and I was like that sounds like the coolest thing ever and they're like yeah I, I, old Irish has all these stories and wonderful things like the toyin you should read the toyin and I bought the toyin right there and then because I have a compulsive need to please people and you know it was pretty good. Morgoth Nix, Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames was a Justine recommendation, so there's your Justine mention for this video. I need to read the second one. I think I have the second one coming in the post. 
on Monday when this video goes up, so I should have that soon. Another Kindle sale, Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. I think that's his first published novel. Elantris is very good. I really love Elantris. Oh, oh, Ignite the Stars I read was like the first thing I ever put on this channel. So we're coming right up to date. YA space stuff, fine. Kathy Waits' Memory of Fire, perfectly tolerable. J. Christoph Stormdancer, not that tolerable. And then we have some stuff I've not read yet. So these were from the end of Galanxfest. We Are the Dead by Mike Shackle, which is some adult fantasy and the Privilege of the Sword by Ellen Kushner because I fell head over heels in love with Ellen Kushner while we were there. I also got Sen and Ascends by Josiah Ban Bancroft because that's kind of been on my radar of something I ought to read at some point. Uh, and then we have my most recent rereads. Uh, embarrassingly, one of them is Court of Mist and Fury, which I was rereading because I wanted to find a funny bit of it. Uh, I actually bought it way back in kind of the insomnia time. Let's move on from that. And then we have <laughs> Scarlet by Marissa Mayer. Uh, again, I talked about this recently. I reread them and one of them I reread on my phone, so it's at the top of this list. We have now excavated my Kindle fully. That's everything on my Kindle that's a book. I have a lot of NetGalley publications on my Kindle. I didn't think it, feel the need to go through all of those because you can just go back on my Goodreads and see what I read when. This was kind of fun. It's uh, Do you see what I mean about it being kind of a time capsule? All of the kind of pandemonium stuff that's on there. It's all books that I've kind of forgotten existed, and including some things that I still need to read. Was this interesting? I'm hoping it was interesting. It was interesting for me anyway, and you know, I make content for me. Deeply, deeply selfish person. I hope you enjoyed this video, and let me know what's one of the most obscure old things on your Kindle or your ebook device of your choosing. The other thing I thought I might do at some point is go through my audiobooks, because I've got kind of a few years worth of those, so if you'd like to see that, let me know, or comment below if you can think of anything else I can kind of go through. In the meantime, you can subscribe, that really helps me out. Follow me in all of my socials, they will be linked below, and I will see you in the next one.